Okay, our winning crew chief has joined us here in the media center. That's Steve Latart. He's crew chief of the number 88 National Guard Chevrolet over at Hendrick Motorsports. Steve, congratulations. Joined by his uh, daughter, Ashley. And uh, congratulations, Steve. Uh, heck of a win uh, for uh, the 88 team uh, here at Martinsville. And certainly uh, uh, that, that, that car, uh, I think Dale said the other day, maybe in the third practice, you all really kind of found something there maybe. And maybe just talk about this win. And I know it's a special win for you. Yeah, I mean, without a doubt, I was able to um, win my first race here as a crew chief with Jeff. Um, this place is always special, obviously, to the Hendrick family and everyone uh, who works at Hendrick Motorsports. Who, you know, we I guess we all consider ourselves part of the Hendrick family, so this place is special. So to come here and win is great. Um, <coughs> really, since Dale and I have worked together, he's always talked about this place, and, and it's just different when he talks about it. It kind of has that twinkle that he really wants that clock. There's something about it. Um, there's certain trophies in this sport that have remained the same, and they're they're just different, and you want to have one. And this is one that you, I was fortunate enough to have, and now I was um, fortunate enough to work with Dale and get him his first. And it, it was just a great day. It was a hard-fought day. There was a lot of beating and banging really all through the field. I think we saw more um, catastrophic-style crashes. You know, you see a lot of sliding around here, but today we saw more real serious crashes than we've ever, really ever seen. And I think that's just that's what the sport has created. It's stressful. It's, it's high pressure. It's what we want. And... Uh, it was good. It was exciting to come out on top. I got to babysit because Mrs. Latart didn't come. So she stayed at home with Tyler, who had a race today. So my son raced today. So little Ashlyn got to spend the weekend with me. So I got to keep on my duties. Multitask. All right, we'll take questions now for Steve Latart. Start here with Jeff Gluck. Jeff Gluck from USA Today. How often have you heard Dale Jr. talk about the clock? <laughs> I mean, how often has he brought it up that he, he wants a clock that bad? Uh, well, he brings it up basically – Oh, anytime Martinsville's in the conversation. Um, it's a place that we thought we were there. Man, we led this race. I can't remember what year it was, under 10 laps to go, and we just weren't good enough, and we got beat. And um, this place, he talks about a lot. Whenever we talk about coming to Martinsville, um, I think Martinsville is a high conversation at our company. You know, we prepare for this race like most people prepare for the big brickyard. You know, there's a reason that all of our cars run well here, and it starts with Mr. Hendrick, and right behind him it comes to our drivers who um, they study it, they understand it, they believe it, they work very hard at it. You know, it's not by chance. We just don't have some lucky drivers that are good here. They work very hard to be good here, and um, I think that just trickles through the organization. So he talks about winning a clock a lot, so now hopefully uh, when I'm at his house having a cold one, we'll listen to the thing chime here 10 years from now and smile. Mark Garrow. Mark Garrow, PRN. Steve, how, how hard was it to make that call at the end to pit for tires? Um, it wasn't hard to make, but it was nerve-wracking to watch. Um, tires were very important, without a doubt. Um, they were important all day. We kind of saw it earlier in the race. We pitted with about 17 or 18 laps on our tires and got back to the lead pretty quickly. The 11 did it with 12 laps on everyone else's tires. So we knew tires were important. It's just... We were sitting, we have like a private channel, my engineer and I, next to one another because of the noise on our intercom, and we were having a conversation, and basically it came down to if you pit and no one else does, you lose. If you stay out and everyone else pits, you lose. So how would you feel better losing? And we decided we'd feel better losing with tires. So then then we just put tires on it. And, and luckily we had a lot of lap down cars between us and like fourth or fifth, so as long as we had a decent stop, we thought we would maintain some decent track position, and then... And then Dale has to go out and do what he did, and that, that makes the pick call look good, um, which I appreciate him doing. Other questions? How about press box? Questions for Steve Letarte. All right, back downstairs, Brad, front row, and then Bob. Brad Norman, NASCAR.com. Steve, you guys were, were fast the past three races, but maybe didn't get the results. Now that, now that you've, you're back in victory lane and you've gotten the win, is there any way to not kind of wonder what if over the past three races? No, not at all. In my opinion, I thank NASCAR for the new chase because we went to Charlotte and Talladega with an opportunity to advance in the chase. And if it was the chase last year when we blew a tire at Kansas, we were eliminated. And that's how I look at it. We blew an engine last year at Chicago, probably put the nine best races we could put together, and we had a hope and a prayer making fourth and points leaving Homestead. I think we got the fifth. So I look at it the opposite. I look at it, they've established a platform and an opportunity that when we left Kansas as deflated as we felt, we could go to Charlotte and make our own destiny, make our own opportunity, make our own chances, and we didn't do that. We, 
we, um, you know, we faltered when we needed to run the best. So there's no excuses. I think that's how a team gets better when you don't make excuses. We're eliminated because we didn't perform as good as well, you know, as well as we needed to to stay in the chase. Um, but I think more than anything, what I'm proud of is the fact that we were eliminated, you know, seven short days ago. This team, you wouldn't have known it. You would have known it Monday morning. Other than disappointment, which is natural, this team performed. They came. They came to work. Um, they were ready to go when we showed up here. And, and you wouldn't know whether we were the championship leader or eliminated from the chase when you walked in the garage Friday. And I think that showed on Sunday afternoon. Bob? Uh, Bob Pockers of Sporting News. Uh, did you guys did, did you, do you do anything in Victory Lane here to commemorate um, 10 years ago? And can you just talk about how you feel when you see Rick Kendrick walk into this place? Well, uh, to the first part of your question, we don't do anything different here than we do. We, they, we handed out our decals that we run, um, which are important to all of us. But other than a decal, every Victory Lane I've ever been a part of since the accident, we uh, make sure we wear our Hendrick hat backwards one time for a picture. Um, some of the newer guys, I think, they, they kind of understand why we get it, but when you look around, there's a group of us that have been here a long time, and I think we really get it. Um, and then when you see Rick, you just, I mean, really, you, I, I, I read the article that I think Marty wrote, and Rick's quote really hit home where he said, you know, he had seen and met parents who had lost loved ones for so long and said, you know, he tried to console them and, you know, try to put himself in his shoes, and until he lost one of his own, he had no idea, and he wishes he could go back to each and every one of those and say, you know, I really didn't know, and I think I look at it the same way. I'm blessed to have a great family with two healthy children, and uh, those are the lessons that people that work for Rick Hendrick learn. It's not about winning Martinsville or managing money or managing budgets or hiring people. Those are all good things he does, but the great things he does, very few people write about um, because they're they're hard to write about. They're hard to understand. And I can say after 20 years, I'm a way better person for Norm Rick Hendrick than I ever was when I started employment there. Any other questions for Steve? Steve, congratulations uh, on this victory here today. And uh, enjoy it. And uh, we'll see you at Texas.